So uh, last time we um, managed to call a Lua function from C and we got a result back from it. But the result wasn't very interesting, the function wasn't very interesting. All it did was return as a constant, which we could have done anyway. So to make this a bit more interesting, we'll just we'll pass in some parameters to this function and we'll actually return more than one result from the function as well, just to show that um, it's quite easy. It's, it's kind of what we've just done before, but uh, you'll see that it, again it's all just done through the lower stack so you've kind of already learned how to do this so um, we'll probably just this original function just returned 4 which was boring so let's just make something that's that's uh, let's make let's make a function called Pythagoras which any surprises for guessing what it's going to do we're going to take a and B and we're going to return the value of C so we're going to take uh, we're going to find the um, length of the hypotenuse on a triangle assuming that these are the other two sides and to do that we're going to return A times A plus B times B so A squared plus B squared is C squared so we've now got a function that accepts well, it accepts two parameters and returns one. So currently we're returning one, but let's stick with that for now. So the start of this is the same. We're going to create our state. We're going to execute this file. Um, we're going to do the file. Uh, and then we, we need to push the name of our function or get our function and put it on the stack. We're going to check that that is actually the function. We've not spelt the name wrong or anything. And before here, we just called it with one Oh, well, it was zero parameters and one argument. Let's just make that a bit clearer with what's going on there. Um, so number of args was zero. And the number of return values was one. So that just makes it slightly easy to read. That We called a function, the one that was on the stack, um, that's how many arguments it had and that's how many things we expected it to return but we're going to change this now we've not got zero arguments anymore we've got two and what do we do to give those arguments to Lua we just push them onto the stack and no surprises if you've never used this before if we want to push a number onto the stack we use Lua push number so I'm going to push the value 3 on that'll go into A. It is left to right in Lua, so the first value you push on is going to be the first value from left to right. And I'm going to push another one on. I'm going to push 4 on. So A is going to be 3 and B is going to be 4. So it's evaluated left to right. Unlike in C++ where I think that's undefined, but the compiler can do what it wants there. Um, so we've pushed our two numbers on. Uh, sorry, we've got the function. We've pushed our two arguments on. We've told it we're going to call it with two, it's going to have two arguments and it's still going to return one value and now we want the return value to be C so it's A squared plus B squared is C squared that's C squared isn't it? C squared and C squared and we're expecting that to be 25 because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle and a 5 squared is 25. So if we got that right, let's just see if that worked. So C squared is 25 and there it is. So we have successfully called a Lua function that we we pushed two parameters to and we return one. And one of the things to know about this P call, again, this is where you have to keep looking up the reference manual if you're doing a Lua and you don't know the functions very well. I think this one will actually pop the function and the two and and the parameters, all of the parameters off the stack. So I think these these are all popped at the point you finish, and you're going to be left on the stack with just the return value. But as you can see, because we're reading it from minus one, this is where this this like reading from the other end of the stack really helps us. It, it wouldn't have really mattered whether it had left those on the stack or not to us, because we know that we want we're interested in the last thing that was pushed on the stack. So the other thing we might want to do is maybe return more than one value from Lua and Lua does that by we just put a comma and you return something else and I'll just return the input values 
as well. So I'm going to have a function now that accepts two arguments but returns three. Now that's crazy. Try doing that in C++. Um, it's going to return three. And so let's just run this as it is, but because now we're just going to look at the last value that's pushed on the stack. Now, is the last value going to be a C squared value, or is it going to be A, or is it going to be B? Um, let's just see what it does. So it's come back with four. So, so the last value on the stack is obviously this B. So we're, we should really expect then that minus three will be this value. So let's change that to minus three. See if we get back our 25. Oops. Oh, what did I do there? I lost my file. So c squared is 25. So because we've now got three values on the stack, that the first one to be pushed was the 25. Uh, and then the next one is probably going to be the A. So we just we're just giving this value back to us just so we can just see what it was. And then we expect the last value to be pushed to be B. So let's let's have a look at that. Uh what happened there? Whoops. Thanks, warning. So we got C squared twenty five, A is three, B is four. So we successfully pushed two values to Lua, called a function or in Lua, and then we returned three values and we read those back. And how easy was that? And again, it, it, it's not really that new code. Like once you've learned the stack and you know the types, um, I really only introduced two new functions here, did I? Because I introduced Lua pcall, which actually I think we'd already called inside that macro there. And I introduced is function, which technically, if I knew it was a function, I didn't really need to check that. But so uh, it's really cool. You can see how the simplicity of the API makes doing stuff a lot easier when you come to do a new thing. Like, oh, now I've got to call this thing with parameters. Um, oh yeah, we introduced push number as well. But so it wasn't that much more difficult than you thought. And and this stack was like, oh yeah, these negative numbers now start to make more sense to me. So. I think Lua's simplicity really um, holds out here that just in a few lines of code, I'm already calling functions from my script. And uh, most of this is just gumph to print out the results and everything. And I've added a bit extra there to make it more readable. So um, that's pretty cool. And uh, maybe next video, we'll look at doing this the opposite way around and getting Lua to call into some native code. And you'll see that it's kind of the same thing, but the opposite. So. Try that next time.